blenders and today I'm going to give you seven tips on how to get the perfect finish in plastering and what I'm going to do is show you the process of plastering a wall but the main aim is just to show you the main distinctions on what makes a good finish in plastering so I'm going to give you seven of the main things you need to consider and you need to follow to get a decent finish I'm not going to waste any more time I'm just going to go straight into the clip and I'm going to tell you the main points that make a great finish so let's get to it thanks a lot cheers Okay, let's do this. This is um, a little job that I had to do just up the road. Basically, it was an old fireplace around. I've had to beat it up, box in the edges, and they just want me to plaster the wall. So it's not a big job, but I thought it'd be a good time to go through some good practices on how to get a good finish in plastering. So, I'll be honest, most people think the finish always comes at the end, but to be honest, it's, it's all the way through. There's so much you have to consider to get the end result of a good finish in plastering. It's not just a case of, oh, I'll whack the plaster on and at the end we'll do a nice, nice trowel up and it'll look lovely. <laughs> it's, there's a lot more to it beforehand. So this is just me going through how to plaster a wall. I'm going to walk you through pretty much the whole process. But what I'm going to do is pick apart the important points on how to start focusing on getting a good finish in plastering. And one point to consider when you are applying your plaster is just try and get it as flat as possible from the beginning really. And generally just focus on your plug sockets um, and your, your power points really because this is some of the areas that can really trip you up. It's tricky to plaster around sockets, it is. But one tip is always pull the uh, socket face away from the wall and just take your time with them. Don't get too much plaster around the edges and always make sure that your plaster is up tight to the back box there's nothing worse than when you finish plastering and you've got massive gaps because let's be honest the one of the biggest places people look is when they're putting their plug sockets in the wall you need to get it right like, it's often missed but that's where everyone's attention will be going you know turning the light switch on make sure your plug sockets are on that's a big thing so make sure you take your time when you're applying your plaster around plug sockets and anything really um, we're going to go into plastering these angles in a minute but that is a big thing like one thing that's missed out on is sockets make sure you always take your time with them so we've applied a plaster one of the biggest things is to get it flat early early on in the game you don't want the plaster to dry this is the first coat. You don't want to be putting the second coat on and the first coat of plaster dried and it's got lumps in it. There's no way you'll ever get that back. So you want to get your first coat of plaster as flat as possible. I recommend using a spatula. I've got the Oxspeed skim here, which I think is, is a brilliant bit of kit. But any spatula will do, you know, like it could be the Rafina, it could be the Put spatula. I really don't mind, but I think the best way to get your wall flat is by using... A similar spatula like the Ox Speed Skim, which aims to get big areas covered fast. Um, but that is a big rule, and big rule of form is make sure your first coat of plaster is flat. You need to do that. And moving on nicely, always apply two coats of plaster. I did a video in the past on one coat plastering. I did it as an experiment. It wasn't too bad, but I'll be honest, it's not the way forward. If there's anyone who's still doing one coat plastering out there, stop it. It's... <laughs> It's not good practice, it's not, it doesn't give the strength the plaster needs and especially with the British gypsum products which I'm using here which is multi-finish, it is a two coat system that relies on the strength of two coats of plaster. So you'll never get a good finish with one coat plastering, it just won't happen. Um, and the other thing, when you are applying your second coat of plaster, generally have it thinner than the first. I just find if you put a, a thick second coat on, it can drag um, and it, and I think you'll just find it harder to get it as flat. The, you've got to think it's the second coat as just a top-up coat. The first coat takes the brunt of the work, fills in any dips, um, covers any all the, uh, the scrim tape, covers up any areas that need sorting out. All the second coat does is just a nice top-up and it allows you to get that the finish that you need from the plaster. But you've just got to think, basically all you're doing with a second coat is just touching up. So... I generally find I'm using half the amount of plaster on my second coat um, and I find when I've been experimenting that I've always had a better finish that way. I don't think a, sec a thick second coat of plaster does the wall any good. Um, it can often take a lot longer to dry and if anything it can clump up and drag. So I find half the amount of second coat is always good for me and um, that's what I found works. Angles, this is massive. 
internal and external. As you can see, I've got plaster the inside here as well. Just chilling, lying down. That's what it's about. <laughs> but um, if you're not familiar with wet angles, wet angles where you plaster two parts of the uh, two sides of the wall at the same time, don't do it because what I'm doing here is I've got uh, three wet angles together. Actually, I've got one, two, three, four, five wet angles together, and these small areas are always hardest to plaster. So if you aren't confident enough to tackle this, then what I'd recommend is just don't do wet angles. Basically, do one wall, do the next wall opposite, and just work in opposites, basically, because the internals and externals angles are probably just as important as your sockets, because that's where your attention goes to. And that's where everyone looks. So just make sure your edges are clean, and in between of applying the plaster, clean your edges off, because what happen otherwise, thick clumps of plaster will dry up, and it'll drag into your plaster when you start flattening. So what I'm doing here is just cleaning the excess plaster off as I go. Just makes the job a lot easier. Again, we're going back to the flattening. Just get your plaster flat as early as possible and make sure you do it right from the beginning. Right, I've had to stop the video here. There's one thing I did when I was looking at the wall. I looked across at the wall behind me I've got the light coming, shining on the wall. One of the main things you need to make sure you've got is one, you've got plenty of light in the room, and two, you keep using the light that's coming in from the side and looking across your wall. You need to glance across, make sure you can't see any ripples, you can't see any dips. You need to use the light, because sideward glancing light is the best factor to show how straight and how clean your wall really is. So when you've got light behind you, glance through, look across and make sure you've always got the light either in front, but ideally you want the light coming from the side of the wall, shining in from the side. That's the best way and the best gauge to see how your wall's doing. Yeah, that was a little, um, that was a very good point. I just thought I'd throw that in and make a big attention to that. Um, always look down your wall, but I've covered that just then. So obviously again, I'm just carrying on with flattening. This, again, I can't emphasize how much the spatulas um, changed my plastering. For time, for for the flatness of the walls you're getting, and just for general wear and tear on your body, I find the Ox Speed Skim is an absolute game changer. If you haven't got one, just maybe give it a think, because they are worth doing. Um, so again, getting your wall flat as early as possible, I'm just kind of touching on the old point here, but I don't think I can emphasize that enough. It's the good finishing plastering is probably 50% down to how flat your wall is. And actually, I'd probably say 70% to be fair, because plaster can be filled, but it can never be uh, reflattened once it's done. Another big tip, troweling both ways. So I've applied my first and second coat, and now we're coming in starting to polish the wall up. Um, but when I'm troweling my wall, this is after I've just uh, flattened it with a speed skim, I always trowel both ways. And that again is just backing up the first point. It just gets the wall flatter that way. Um, if you're troweling both ways, you're not only getting it flat vertically, but you're also getting it flat horizontally, which means you're crossing over yourself and you, you're scrutinizing the plaster that you've put on the wall. It just means that you've, you're getting a lot more results, flatter walls, and you're just getting a better all round finish doing it that way. So don't just trowel one way, don't just trowel up, don't just trowel down travel across as well and it just ensures that your wall is going to get flatter and flatter and flatter so as you can see I've started from the top travel down but then I also travel across my work as you can see there horizontally and it just makes sure that your wall is just going to get a flatter result at the end of it um, again in terms of practice you always start from the top half of the wall and work, work down that's just a general rule of thumb and why that helps is because it stops the plaster falling from the top to the bottom. So if you did it your way round and start from the bottom and then came to the top, then you might drop plaster. Um, to be honest, if you're experienced, it doesn't matter that much. For anyone who's starting out, I think that's pretty crucial to start from the top. Um, and again, it's the same with edges and angles. Make sure you trial them both ways. Work along the bead, but also work through it. And this means that it's gonna, the plaster is going to be parallel to the bead. There's nothing worse than when you are plastering and you've got a bump or a ridge along your corner bead. And when it's painted, they just look shocking. You need to make sure your plaster runs in line with your corner bead and it's flat all the way through. Um, again, I can't, I 
I can't say how important it is to get your angles right. This is where people will criticise you the most, I think. You need crisp angles, your reveals, your internal corners. They need to make sure that they're bang on. And if you are going to practice anything, I'd focus on your angles um, as well as getting your walls flat. Like I said, if you've got a few misses on the plaster, that can be filled from the decorator. But it's going to be very hard for someone to make your angles look nice if you haven't done it right. So really focus on make sure your angles and corners are plastered perfectly. Because to me, that just is a great mark of a good plasterer. A good, this is more uh, housekeeping. I always clean up my edges. Um, this is a finished room, so the coving's in place, the walls have been uh, painted. You just try and keep the area as clean as possible. I've got my dust sheets down on the floor. I'm cleaning along the coving. You can use masking tape if you want, but I, I prefer not to. I prefer to clean up as I go, to be honest. I don't like taping up. I don't like the waste, and I don't like the process of doing it. <laughs> Maybe I'm lazy, I don't know, but I prefer just to get a sponge and clean as I go, really. I just find it's a bit faster. And just cleaning along the coving on the front and on the underside, I think it's just good practice for anyone who's trying to make a good reputation for themselves. And um, don't be scared to use water when you're plastering. Don't be scared to use a water brush to try and um, bring the plaster back to life. It's often where the plaster will get ahead of you. Um, it starts to firm up a lot sooner than what you thought it was. Don't be scared to get your water brush out and clean and uh, plaster from that and it, you know it's again it's coming back to housekeeping it's really good for keeping your edges clean a lot of people use spray bottles but what I like about the the water brush is that you can use the bristles to clean any angles and you can I just find it's a good method to clean up whilst you're flattening your walls again if you can do two jobs at once I'm a big fan of that to save time because um, at the end of the day the more walls you're doing plastering the more money you make so if you've got the water brush I just prefer it so much more than a sprayer spray is good because you've got a continuous amount of water but i find the water brushes just gives you that control on the edges that you need to make sure again that your angles are bang on so we're coming to the crux of it now this is a final stage of plastering i i think a wet trowel is probably one of the best ways to get that clean sparse uh, finish in um in plastering and basically all we're doing i'm getting my water brush or you can use a spray if you want I'm just cross troweling my work. So instead of working vertically like I have been, now what we're doing is we're coming across the wall. And again, that comes back to my old theory where if you're troweling both ways, you're going to get your wall flatter and flatter. And that is just common practice. Horizontally and vertically, if working at the same time, you're going to get a flatter wall. So what you're doing is I'm just running a water brush across the wall and I'm using a super flex trowel. Again, let's talk about super flexes for a minute. I've seen this on um, a post of someone who's flattening their wall with a super flex trowel. I really don't recommend it. It looks good at the time, but when it's painted, it's it's shocking. <laughs> so I'm only just using my super flex trowel now, and this is a penultimate stage of plastering. Don't ever use it any earlier. And I, I'm saying this from experience. I used to use it earlier when I was young, and it didn't go well. <laughs> so... Again, it's a very easy process to wet trowel. All you're doing is using the water brush to lubricate the wall and you're just troweling across. A lot of pressure when you are wet troweling because at this point the plaster is very hard. So a lot of pressure pushing again into the wall and all you're doing is just giving, we're just polishing more than anything now. Your wall should already be flat at this point. All we're doing is giving it that, that little, that final spark, that magic touch. If you know what I mean, this is just basically aesthetics really. It does flatten the wall to a point, but I think by this stage, the plaster is it's probably too far gone. Uh, all the work's been done. If you use spatulas and you flatten both ways, then you should be all right. Um, so I'm just speeding up a little bit. Again, at the bottom, when it comes to the bottoms, I just find it's easier just to trial upwards. But what we're focusing on again is just making sure them beads are bang on, working across the beads and making sure your internal and external angles look as good as they can do. That is coming to me towards the best part of plastering. And coming towards the plug sockets, taking your time around them. Make sure you've got enough plaster in there and make sure they look crisp. Coming to the final stage, it's a dry trowel. And this is my best advice for the final trowel of plastering. Use a plastic trowel. I've got the uh, Rafina Plaza Flex. For me, this is the best plastic trowel on the market. The reason I use plastic 
I did a little talk at Ox, and uh, the re- the, someone said, do you recommend plastic trowels? And it, yeah, definitely. Steel, what it does, it it brings a, a sheen to the wall. It over polishes the wall, and what happens, it pulls the moisture from the back of the plaster and brings it to the front. Plastic doesn't do that. If you use a plastic flower trowel, you're going to get much more of a matte finish, which is good for the decorators. Um, I know plasterers think that's not our job, but at the end of the day, whoever's after us, it matters. So the plastic trowel gives it that nice matte finish. It dulls down the plaster and it takes the shine out of the wall. You'll have a bit of a shine because you've, we've used steel all the way through, but the plastic just mats it back again. And it just gives it a lovely, smooth finish. And, it, it, you know, it, it, if talking about, we are going to talk about aesthetics. It just makes the wall look a lot more... Um, it just makes it look a lot more even. The complexion kind of stays the same with plastic. I just can't emphasize it enough to finish with a, a dry plastic trowel. No water at this stage. We don't want any water. All the water has been used up. We just want a dry trowel with a plastic um, plastic blade. And I don't think you can get a finish better than that. I think that is one of the best things you can do. Um, and again, just working around the plug sockets. Looking down the wall, making sure it's flat. By this point, it's too late, but <laughs> just polishing it up, getting it ready for the next stages above us. And uh, yeah, that's the points on how to get a great finishing plastering. I'm going to wrap it up now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you have not subscribed to our channel so far, hit that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate it. And look. As to finish, we're kind of getting in plastering. So if you like what we do, please follow and keep on watching. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.